I started my YouTube channel about 12 years ago in September of 2011. And oh my gosh, there is a lot of stuff that I wish I knew back then. For one, it would have helped me grow my YouTube channel much faster. It took like nine years for me to hit 10K subscribers and uh, it doesn't have to take that long, by the way. But I also think that if I would have had the encouragement that I'm gonna share with you in today's video, I would have been less discouraged and felt less alone. Growing your YouTube channel can be a difficult and discouraging journey. And I wanna do anything that I can do to make it a little bit easier for you. Which is why today I'm sharing seven things that I wish I would have known when I got started on YouTube. So welcome back to another Coffee Chat with Katie. Today I have my classic latte helado con leche de avena y vanilla. Currently the van is parked in San Jose del Cabo and I have found an amazing little cafe which I have been to, um, I, I forget how many times already, but the lattes slap, it's, it's so good. As always, let me know what you are drinking in the comments below and let's get started. Number one, if you don't have a good title, you don't have a good video. But not in the way you might think. Many beginner YouTubers really, really focus on optimizing their titles for search. And I get that. That's not necessarily a bad strategy. You can definitely get traffic to your videos from YouTube search, but if you wanna grow faster and if you want to be more flexible and creative in your content, then I wanna encourage you to instead optimize your videos for the homepage. Instead of putting just as many keywords as possible in your title, think about how you can formulate it like a news headline, like the first sentence to a very scandalous story, or just speaking in a way that feels relatable to your audience, not in a way that feels relatable to, you know, a search engine. And you really, really want to have this title in mind before you go to all the work of actually, you know, scripting and filming that video, because I would just hate for you to pour all these hours into a video that you love, but you haven't found a good way to market it to your ideal viewer yet, and therefore you're going to not see the results that you want. So start your content creation process with a good title. I wish I would have known that sooner. Number two, video quality is important, but audio quality is more important. A lot of creators, especially at the beginning, get caught up on what camera they're using. And don't get me wrong, you want your videos to be crisp and bright and clear. However, bad audio is more annoying than bad video. People are willing to watch something that's like a little bit grainy or a little bit underexposed if they can hear you clearly. But if your audio is like really distorted or there's a dog barking in the background or there's lots of traffic noises or sirens, like that is gonna make somebody click away from the video really fast. Which is why looking back, I should have invested in a better microphone before I went ahead and invested in a better camera. Here's a couple options for you if you're looking to upgrade your audio setup. I love my Rode Video Micro. You're hearing the audio from it right now. It has been my go-to for many years. I've tried a lot of different mini shotgun mics and this one has just never done me dirty. <laughs> I always get good results from it. It doesn't need an external battery. You just plug it into your camera and you're good to go. Another really good option if you want to film a little bit further away from your camera is these DJI lav mics. This is what they sound like. I have it clipped on underneath my shirt here. I love using these with my phone, with my cameras. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're so versatile and just really, really easy to use and always give good results. I would recommend if you're currently filming with your phone, keep filming with your phone and just get the DJI lav mic so you can up your game with your phone audio. And they will also work for you if you someday upgrade to a camera because you can use them both ways. Or if you already have a camera, it's literally just like $50 or so to get the Rode Video Micro and it's really gonna improve your audio quality. Number three, the first 30 seconds make or break your video. The intro truly is everything. Here's a few quick tips for making your intro more engaging so that you can actually keep those viewers who have been convinced by your title and thumbnail to keep watching till the end. For one, keep it short. Get to the point immediately and reaffirm what your title and thumbnail promised in your intro. I know, especially when you're getting started, it feels like you need to sit down and be like, oh, hey, hi, how's it going? Isn't the weather beautiful today, blah, blah, blah. That is gonna be a surefire way to get people to click away from your video. It's okay to include the pleasantries. It's okay to infuse your personality, but I recommend doing that after your 30 seconds second intro, kind of like how I, you know, talk about the coffee chat thing once I've already got you hooked about the subject matter of the video. A really, really great method for retention from your intro into the rest of the video is to establish a question. 
question. Bring up something that your viewer is gonna need to keep watching in order to get the answer. In this video, I use the classic format, seven things I wish I knew before I started on YouTube. I bring that up in the intro and obviously you know you're gonna need to watch to the end to hear all seven. But in more narrative style videos, it could be something like, hey, we're in Venice, but for only 24 hours, can we see all the major sites in just one day? Or maybe we're visiting three epic castles in Slovenia and we're going to rate them all and figure out which one is the best and where you should visit. I actually have a YouTube script template. It's included in my starter pack for content creators that has all my best notion templates, all that kind of thing. It's linked in the description if you wanna check it out. Number four, not all metrics are created equal. YouTube Studio can be so overwhelming when you first get started, so it's important that you understand what metrics you actually need to be able to craft a more effective YouTube strategy. It can be easy to get overwhelmed with all of the various metrics for your YouTube videos, but ultimately there are really two that you need to be concerned about, AVD and CTR. CTR stands for click-through rate, and it represents the number of people who actually clicked on your thumbnail after seeing it in search results, the homepage, or in like the sidebar of suggested videos. This is a good proxy to the YouTube algorithm of how intriguing or interesting your video is, how likely it is to get people to watch. AVD stands for average view duration, and it represents the number of those people who clicked, like how long they watched your video for. And this is basically a proxy to the YouTube algorithm of how engaging your video actually is. Together, these tell the algorithm how good you are at getting people to click and how good you are at getting people to stick around on the platform. My personal favorite way to keep track of all these metrics is with Dash Hudson, the sponsor of today's video. I personally think Dash Hudson is the perfect tool for content creators and social media managers to keep track of their metrics across platforms in a really highly visual and user-friendly way. Plus, recently Dash Hudson released this really cool new feature called Vision AI. This allows you to upload pieces of content that you're thinking about posting to social and Vision will actually give you a prediction of how well it's likely to perform based on your past metrics. This is honestly like the backbone of any successful content creator strategy, understanding how your past content performance really should guide your future content strategy. And Vision helps you craft that strategy with AI. Major brands like Cotton On and Summer Fridays use Dash Hudson's Vision AI tool to help craft their content strategy. And really, I think Dash Hudson can be an effective tool for teams of all sizes to craft a really intentional and data-backed social strategy. If you wanna try it out for yourself, you can grab a free trial of Dash Hudson at the link in the description. Number five, it's better to leave them wanting more. So speaking of metrics, we know that increasing our average view duration or AVD is the best way to actually get your videos recommended in the algorithm and help to grow your channel. So how do you do that exactly? Well, in simple terms, you want to leave your viewer wanting more. Here's the thing. Many of us creators have this inclination that you want to include everything you have to say in your video. You want to make every video the ultimate guide to, or like a complete comprehensive overview of whatever you're talking about. And that is a very noble motivation. Obviously we want to make good quality content and we want to make sure that, you know, you include all the necessary information. However, what this often leads to is making videos kind of longer than they would need to be and you end up with viewers who are kind of starting to get bored of it by the end which is not what you want if you want to have a high average view duration trust me i definitely used to do this when i would make like a how to grow an instagram video or an editing tiktoks video i would feel like i need to include every last detail but the reality is it's actually better for you and the audience and the algorithm if you keep your videos more short and sweet and to the point. And I don't necessarily mean that there is a specific length that is ideal. The perfect length for your video is the amount of time that you need to provide just enough information and no more. So it's really gonna depend on the topic and the story that you're telling. But think about it this way. If you want your viewer to kind of binge your channel or keep watching at the end of your video, the best way to do that is to tell them just enough and then to promise, the rest of the story or the rest of the information they need is in the next video and go click on that next. That's gonna help get your viewer to the end of this video, but also it's gonna get them onto your next video. So it's not only gonna increase your average view duration, but it's also gonna increase your watch session, the amount of time that you influence somebody to stay watching several videos in a string on YouTube. That's gonna lead your viewers to actually binge your channel and eventually become subscribers. I used to feel like every YouTube video I made had to be the absolute A to Z on whatever topic 
like I was discussing, but I've since realized it's actually much more effective to just share what you need to share and then make another video about the next topic. Number six, don't plan to pivot. Look, here's the thing. A lot of creators, when they get started, will create a lot of videos that are optimized, especially for search, maybe for the homepage, but they'll be in a really, really strict niche with the idea that they'll be able to grow their channel faster. And once they've grown their channel to a certain extent, then they'll be able to branch out and talk about other topics that they really want to be discussing. The truth is this will help you grow faster than trying to grow a variety channel from scratch. But what it will result in is an audience that doesn't end up super engaged in the content that you really want to be talking about. So my suggestion is simply this, don't grow your channel based off content that you don't see yourself creating in the long term just because you think that type of content is going to help you grow faster. The truth is it might. Niching down might help you grow faster, but it might help you grow an audience that you don't really want to have because you want to have an audience that's interested in, you know, what you really want to be creating. So don't niche down into a really educational channel if your goal is to eventually do lifestyle. Try to incorporate lifestyle, but do it in a way that is optimized for the homepage, potentially a little bit optimized for search as well to help you grow at the beginning. And I know niching down like that can be really tempting, especially when you're finding it difficult to grow because it does have this promise of faster growth and search engine optimization, but you really don't want to pigeonhole yourself and build for yourself a very transactional audience when what you really want is a relational audience. From the start, find a healthy balance of what you love to create and what the algorithm loves and you will have a good strategy for growth but also sustainability so that you don't get burnt out and you don't end up in a niche that you hate number seven it takes time but it is worth it growing a youtube channel is the opposite of a get rich quick scheme it's more like a work hard doubt yourself feel discouraged but feel creative and get rich really slow scheme, but I love it. It's the most fun job in the world in my opinion and I feel so grateful that I got to fulfill 13 year old Katie's dream of being a full-time YouTuber. I honestly have to pinch myself like all the time because I can't believe that I get to do this for my job and I get to inspire other people who also are passionate about creating. I wholeheartedly believe that this career is worth it and I'm so grateful to my past self for not giving up even when Honestly, it was the most logical decision to give up. I had been making videos consistently for like eight or nine years and I hadn't seen results yet. Maybe I'm just a slow learner. Maybe I'm just a late bloomer, but I'm so glad that I kept with it and I kept trying and I want the same for you. So even though sometimes it feels impossible, please stick with it because trust me, your future self will thank you. So I hope you found this video encouraging on your YouTube journey. If you want some more tips specifically about my six point about like how to effectively pivot your channel like maybe you have grown in a niche and now you're like shoot I want to do something else what do I do I talk about that quite in depth in this video it's something I've experienced myself it's something I've observed in many many youtubers and I think that this method for actually effectively pivoting your channel and bringing your audience along with you I think more people should know about this so you can check that out and also if you want my YouTube script template and all of my other notion templates and tools and resources to help you as a content creator that content creator starter kit is linked below as always i hope that you are having adventures and following your dreams and i'll catch you in the next video bye